All right, so this is one of the things that the people have been waiting for. And I'm actually going to do something very interesting. It's almost verse by verse commentary. Not literally, because we're going to have to go through Isaiah 1 through 10. But this is part of prophecy. And some people might go, really? How does this have to do with it? It's going to be a lot of, this is going to be very interesting how we do this. And it all relates, believe it or not, to right now. A lot of it relates to what's going on right now. With the midterms coming up, and no, I don't mean your exam. You know what I'm talking about. With the midterms coming out, I'm seeing so many things that are happening. And Isaiah 1 through 10 is flashing before my eyes. Now, what's important to understand is Isaiah chapter 1 through 10, there are twofold applications you have to understand. One, it's a historical application to the timeline of the children of Israel where their kingdom is about to fall apart. They're in their last days as a nation. God's people are basically in their last moments. This has a lot to do with our nation. We can see a lot that will match up with our nation and with God's people today, us, the Christian church. And what you see is God pronouncing judgment and the signs of the times that are going on with them historically, but it moves to a prophetic application. There are some verses that cannot apply historically to the Jews when they're at their last days as a nation. It actually refers to the last days as a nation in the future when the tribulation commences. So there's no doubt you're going to see that. It's the same thing with the book of Psalm. It's the same thing with actually majority of the books of the Bible. Usually they'll always give statements that apply historically to their time period, but then it moves to a prophetic application quite often. Because why? Some of those verses could not have been fulfilled historically at that time. Another great example is the prophecies about Jesus Christ. New Testament verses were giving prophecies about Jesus Christ being fulfilled, but those were verses in the Old Testament that, were, that sounded like historical uh, historical applications to their own time period, to the speaker. But no, God was seeing as a prophetic fulfillment and an application that is moved to the future. So that is very common sense. For people to claim that they're preterist or to say that they're not dispensationalists, they don't know their Bibles. It, then they'll have to deny Jesus Christ's prophecies too. Because that is bi basic common sense in biblical hermeneutics when you read the scripture. It goes from a historical application many times, but then it just moves to the future time period application. We're going to see that with Isaiah 1 through 10. So then what you're seeing going on right now will apply to two things, actually. One is you can see the last days of God's people and the last days of our nation matching with Israel in their last days and the last days with God's people. At the same time, you also see things going on today that is paving a way for the tribulation. And the Bible talks about what's going to happen in the tribulation in Isaiah 1 through 10. That's the prophetic fulfillment. But in order for these things to happen in the tribulation, it doesn't just come out like that as soon as we get raptured. There has to be some things already going on, pre precursors going on. Yeah. That way, when the tribulation starts, people are used to that. Yeah. See? So you're going to see that in Isaiah 1 through 10. So let's begin. It's a lot of interesting things here. Ready for a verse-by-verse -verse Bible study? Yeah. We're going to go through some interesting stuff here. And yes, it will cover all the current events, believe it or not. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 1. And then we'll start off with verse 10. Verse 10. The Bible says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of what? Sodom. Sodom. But he's speaking to Israel. If you look at verse 1. God calls this nation, before they fall apart as a nation, in the last days, as their nation, God calls them Sodom. Wow. Isn't that strange? Isn't that strange? It matches with us today, doesn't it? Rulers, plural, of Sodom. Yeah. Look at the White House. Look at the government offices. Look at these people who are of Sodom getting in. 
promoting their lifestyle of Sodom, so to speak. Give ear unto the law of, law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. There's no doubt that we are living in those times and the lifestyle, the sinful living of Sodom is plainly coming out. Have you seen that interview, which is very disgusting, with Biden? So there was a person who had an interview with Biden, and this is like unheard of in the White House before. Now this person is transgender, and then the title of the article in Fox News is, this is pretty disgusting, all right? I'll try to be as uh, censored as possible. But because we're dealing with the evils of the world, there are just some things that you can't uh, ignore, right? Like in the Bible, sometimes it'll mention certain evils, like in the book of Genesis, which I won't mention, and it'll give certain specifics when it has to, but it won't just go as deep, okay? So I'm gonna try to do the same thing. The title of the news is Transgender Biden Interviewer Called to Normalize Trans Woman Having Visible, let's just say, uh, uh, showing that part in the bottom, okay? So in other words, if some of you <laughs> are lost, the idea is these people wear tight outfits because they think they're part of a different gender. So you he see these males wearing tight outfits and then they're moaning about when they go shopping, people staring at them weird or feeling troubled because in their shorts or in their pants, I, I'm assuming it was shorts, it was pretty tight. So then their bottom part was visibly showing, let's say. And then this interviewer with Biden was arguing and fussing. So, you know, notice this discrimination in our society. We have to normalize this. How do we normalize it? Well, one, it's either loose clothing, or two, if it turns out that the person thinks that, hey, I can wear tight clothing, then we have to normalize our society where people think, hey, that's normal to look at. That's just evil. That's just messed up. That's totally disturbing. So that's the title of the article from Fox News. Let's look at... Uh, Verse 12 of chapter 2. Chapter 2 and verse 12. You know what people have a problem? How you get this kind of lifestyle coming out? It started, people will hate me for saying this, but this is very true. It started with a love of self, pride over your flesh, over your identity. And let's, I'll talk about myself here. I am... Uh, full-blooded and Korean, so to speak. I'm sure that I may have had mixed blood if we were to go back uh, in genealogy many, many years ago, but I identify myself as Korean. But the problem with Korean people nowadays is that they have so much pride in their identity, so then they will harp on that, and they will victimize about their own issues so that the whole world can pay attention to them and meet their need. When that happens, that becomes a Pandora's box, an open door, where there's a never-ending cycle of a person identifying with whatever they like about themselves. It goes from then nationality, then it goes to your sexual identity, then it goes to your uh, ability, and we'll come to that soon, and then it goes to where? It's a never-ending cycle. Do you understand that? When there's a pride over self, this becomes a dangerous thing where if something about yourself is considered wrong in the word of God, it's forbidden to talk about it. When that becomes that way, did you ever notice in debates, one of the things, no matter how logical or rational your debate is, what would automatically turn people out and shun your arguments, no matter how reasonable it sounds, is if it's one key word, discrimination. 
And if they're used to a society of not tolerating discrimination and they feel turned off when they think about what's discriminatory from their schools or the news media. Am I making any sense here? That's the problem with our society nowadays. When that keeps going on, it doesn't matter how rational your argument is. If a person automatically thinks discrimination or hatred, then no matter how rational your argument is, they'll shun down. That's the kind of day and age we live in. That's dangerous, you know that? I notice that even with us Christians too, even with myself, sometimes when we give out arguments, we're, we're careful about certain trigger words or certain things that we say that might accidentally stir up the emotion and get them to think that we're discriminatory. That's, we're living in that day and age. If you don't believe me, one great example is about what the Bible says about the differences with men and women, right? About men, that they are to be under submission under the husbands. But we can't just say it like that nowadays. Nowadays when we talk about that, preachers, when they talk about their wives, they never say anything bad. They always elevate them in a position that's better than them. And then the women nowadays, if they're married, they don't have to do that with their husbands. Sometimes if they point out weak spots of their husband, that's taken normally. But if you mention about that with your wives when you preach, that's taken as a negative view. If I were to do that, how would you people feel? Do you understand? See, that's the day and age we live in. So it's so dangerous now. I don't think we really understand that we have been influenced by this world, even Bible believers or Christians. Because we're thinking about abuse, right? We're thinking about uh, discrimination, women being abused, different races being persecuted or abused, colonization, and then see that? We're all stuck in that in our head. That's why we're careful nowadays. I hope that this is going to become eye-opening to you. Now, let's look what God says about pride. But people can harp on their identity or their victimization or their persecution to a point they take pride in it. And that becomes a very dangerous thing, and God warns what happens. Notice the signs of the last days is that, pr that pride in their identity. Isaiah chapter 2, and then notice in verse 12, for the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty. Notice this is the timeline of the tribulation. It's going to come upon who? Proud and lofty. And upon everyone that is lifted up. Everyone has this pride, right? They talk about beep pride. You know what I mean? Three-letter word. <laughs> There's a pride on their own identities. But God says he's going to bring them low. Verse 13, And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted, above, uh, lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of man shall be what? Bowed down. And the haughtiness of men shall be what? Made low. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. We got people idolizing certain people. They're idolizing themselves. Yep. Notice as well, the Bible talks about that there are certain people who actually prepare bunkers during this time of the tribulation. Because they know that God's anger is coming at the tribulation. The Bible talks about, in verse 19, And they shall go into the holes of the rocks, and into the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord, and for the glory of His majesty, when He arises to shake terribly the earth. Guess what? This is an article from the New York Post. title of the article is, Billionaire Bunkers, How the World's Wealthiest Are Paying to Escape Reality. Believe it or not, there are some elites who already know what's going to happen ahead. And that's the reason why they're running for the hills, so to speak, and preparing their bunkers, so to speak, preparing their escape, because they know as 
they keep living in this society, it's going downhill. Do you see what's going on to our world? This is going so downhill. It's getting messed up. The end is coming. And they know it. That's why they've been bailing out. I, you already heard so, so many reports going on. Go to England, right? What happened to Boris Johnson? He got out. Coincidentally, same timing when, queen, uh, when the queen died. And then the new prime minister couldn't take a hit and bailed out real quick. Why? Because they know the time is up. Fauci resigned or he left, okay? You see CNN going downhill. They're getting fire left and right. You see the chief, Jeff, he left. Frito boy got left and started his own independent outlet. You even got this guy in CNN who doesn't talk like this. You know, they don't want him either. He gets kicked out. Everyone is just bailing out, man. They know something bad is going on. I mean, even, believe it or not, the comedians are leaving left and right as well. For some of you who didn't know that, there are comedians leaving left and right. You heard about Trevor Noah, right? Oh, poor guy. I'm not going to listen to him anymore. Well, he's leaving. And then if you read articles about Trevor Noah leaving, it is interesting that they, make it, that they talk about this blob doofus James Corden and other people who are like, oh, you know, we're going to retire, retire. Everyone is retiring. I'm in the ministry for so many years. I haven't retired yet. Christians haven't retired yet. Bible-believing pastors and Bible-believing churches haven't retired yet. We marched on. You bunch of pansies and sissies tried to shut us down, kick us out, yeah. and you can't take a little lick and you're retiring. Yeah. <laughs> that speaks something well about you, yeah. that you, bu you guys are a bunch of weaklings, yeah. evil, demon-possessed people. You know why you're attacking us so hard with all your power? You're so weak and pathetic to do it yourselves. Demon-possessed, evil people, man. They've got what's coming for them, and the Lord just judged them left and right. They're just getting bombed left and right, bombed left and right, getting kicked out left and right. There is no doubt about it. This is so funny. From uh, Here's another article from Los Angeles Times. You've heard about Tulsi Gabbard? And the title of the article is Tulsi Gabbard Leaves Democratic Party Calling It an Elitist Cabal. How about it? So there's a Democrat that now realizes that this is, uh, this is wrong and they're leaving. I mean, you look at Bill Mayer. I mean, that, even that comedian knows that this uh, leftist thing is going really ultra-woke and this is just going plainly down the wrong hill. They're even... He's even realizing it. People are realizing that. This is former representative Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii. I'm reading the article. Announced on Tuesday, she is leaving the Democratic Party, saying it is under, quote, complete control of an elitist cabal, end of quote, and urging, quote, fellow common sense, independent-minded Democrats, end of quote, to leave the party with her. <laughs> Quote, she says, I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party that is now under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers driven by cowardly wokeness who divide us by racializing every issue and stoke anti-white racism. Now, I'm reading from the Los Angeles Times. I'm not saying this. She alleged the Democratic Party is actively undermining our God-given freedoms and is dragging the country closer to nuclear war. She also said the party is hostile toward religious and spiritual people and police and criticized its immigration and national security policies. Gabbard said this, I believe in a government that is of, by, and for the people. Unfortunately, today's Democratic Party does not. Instead, it stands for a government, government of, by, and for the powerful elite. They all know it's the end, it's the end for them and that everything is crashing downhill. 
Anybody with common sense can see United States is downhill and everything around our world is going downhill. And it's not just, <coughs> it's not just this. It's their own character. It's their own character and morality and their own, the fabric of society itself. Let's keep reading right here about the bunkers. Verse 20. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. When God comes down and judges the earth, these elites, they're preparing their bunkers. What they see right now, or what some might see right now is, I'm hiding out because of all the chaos going on, because of God's judgment. But later on, they'll find out more specifically that it is God himself, when he comes down, that they're really going to go to their bunker. Why? Because they pre prepped it a long time ago, see? That's the reason why these things are to occur right now, so that it can condition us. Let's go to chapter 3, verse 4. Chapter 3, verse 4. Now notice what's happening. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. That's what's happening in the last <laughs> days of their nation, that immature-minded people will be their rulers, and people who have a baby mindset like, ah! when they get triggered by a certain emotion and think that you're not promoting this, isn't that, I mean, uh, compare a baby's crying with one of those demon-possessed, uh, left-handed, let's just call it left-handed people, okay? You'll know what I mean by that, all right? Hear them go, ah! with the baby. Do you see a difference? No, there's no difference. Immature, demon-possessed mindset because of what they've been brainwashed by this wicked, evil society. And the people shall be oppressed, in verse 5, everyone by another and everyone by his neighbor. Why, isn't that the truth? I mean, we remember uh, last year? Apparently, The View forgot about it when they were interviews viewing Ted Cruz. But uh, apparently they all thought it was a summer of love, as one of the, one of the government officials said, right? <laughs> People turning against each other. So wicked. It's riot. It's chaos. It's totally messed up. Keep reading. And everyone by his neighbor, the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. Ain't that the truth? Immature people are the ones who are being so proud of themselves because they've been so brainwashed by their schools about taking pride in their own identity. And they're the ones who thinks that they're the experts against those who are older, more experienced, or actual experts in the field, in economy, and in government offices. But no, you get immature people in the offices taking care of that. You've seen them nowadays? I don't know if you've seen it, but I've seen it. It's so apparent. You've seen childish people, immature people, taking over and ruling over our country nowadays instead of the experience. <laughs> there are tons of articles, you can read it, but they're firing this color. Okay, let's just say this color, okay? You know what I'm talking about? All right, I'm looking at the brother in case some of you are still lost, okay? <laughs> they're firing this color, all right? The people who has this, okay? <laughs> Left and right, because there's not much diversity going on. So they look, there are tons of articles on this. They think that uh, math is racism. They think that going by grades is racism. Going by uh, the resume, the expertise, actual results is racism. Because all of it all connects to white privilege. So then they'll have to promote this diversity garb to make up for it, you know what happens? You don't get people who are experts taking care of the field now, right? So look at this nowadays. 
Look at how this is affecting everything with the economy, sports, with business and government, everything around you because of promoting diversity. And when you put that in rather than their resume, their expertise, then what's going to happen? <laughs> so that's why I drew this as a red foundation. Notice that the reason why all these problems happen, they can have a billion excuses, but it's because of this foundation. That's the devil's tactic. You might say, why is all of this happening? The reason why all this is happening is so simple. It starts with this foundation. The people are blinded by this. News is concentrating only on this. This is the trigger word. Do you understand that? That makes up most of the news. So then when you hear news about this, it hides its track, the people in charge of it or who are brought up in court. This one makes up for it. It doesn't get as much news. And then this one keeps going on. And then you get people like this. No, not like this. Yes, you get people like this who can try to run for office as well. And I mean that literally, literally. How many of you have watched the Pennsylvania debate? It was, I was, uh, okay. I'm not, look, I don't even believe in making fun of that guy too. I actually felt really, really bad. But what, uh, but what I'm upset about, which is why I'm, bringing up, uh, why I'm bringing up the Pennsylvania debate, is how far society has gone down the hole that they'd be more than willing to justify and make the debate look good even if the person has this issue. And then they'll pretend like, you know, they'll give this impression to people like, hey, overlook the deficiency because of this that you're scared to cover. Because you might be discriminatory if you say certain words. So then let's be careful of that and just look at the good points right here. Because you don't want to be hateful and mean. So then cover the good points. And then when you keep doing that, and society is like, yeah, let's look at the good point. That person has a good heart. So let's just vote that person in because the good heart is good enough. <laughs> good heart, good enough. Put that in any resume. Come on. <laughs> Put that in any resume. Well, I have a good heart. Yeah, but, um, you know, we need actual results because you're dealing with hard, real life to life issues here. Yep. Not just, hey, let's be nice to each other. Do you understand that? This is so messed up. This is from Occupy Democrats, and I can't believe what they tweeted here. They are so brainwashed. The verse is so true that people have babes to rule over them, people who have immature mindsets, who don't have mature, grown adult mindset because of their own bias, their own blindness. You know what they said about the Pennsylvania debate? about the poor guy who was debating with, I mean, imagine John Fetterman. I mean, this sad individual went through a stroke that affected his mental capacity. And then he was debating, guess what, on the Republican side. You, you'd, you'd be so happy. Dr. Oz, what a debate, you know, what a debate. I didn't watch it because I was just too embarrassed to watch it. I was afraid to watch it. And my goodness, where they've been accusing John Fetterman about fracking, and then he denied being a part of fracking. This is pretty sad. When they asked him point blank in the, in the debate, do you support fracking? He said, I support fracking. Yes, I firmly support fracking. And then the moderator says, uh, thank you very much, sir. And then went to the next guy. You know why? Because they don't want to do any disrespect because they're afraid of being hateful and mean. That's why this thing I strongly believe is a cover-up. Because it's in our hearts, this thing, not the Word of God. This thing is so much in our hearts, we're more afraid of hurting people's feelings yeah. rather than what is truth. 
I hope your eyes are getting opened by this. And next time when you hear preaching and teaching, to not get offended. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We've been definitely influenced by this society. I don't believe in being mean. I believe you should be considerate. The Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, right? That charity means love in action. We have to prove that love by our actions. So I'm a strong believer in that, but I don't believe in a false kind of love where you're so pretentious that you're not seeing the issue here. That ain't love anyway. There's a tweet by Occupy Democrats. They're uh, like a left-wing, demon-possessed group of people. And they mentioned when they watched the Pennsylvania debate, John Fetterman is crushing Trumper Dr. Oz right now. Heart, heart, heart emojis. Read that verse again. And I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. The child shall behave himself against, proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. Can you believe this? Prophecy. I mean, I'm seeing it as fulfilled right before our eyes. Look at our current president, if you don't really believe that. You, you remember his gaffes? Look, this ain't the end of it, all right? There's, he still made a, a lot more. If I'm going to give our church's website, I'm going to spell it out. RealBibleBelievers.com R-E-A-L-B-I-B-L-E-B-E-L-I-E-V-E-R-S D-O-T Cop. Yeah. That, that would be weird, right, obviously? Yeah. You know what Biden did? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> From the New York Post, title of the article, Biden mocked for spelling out dot in website address off teleprompter. When he was giving his government website, he was saying, you know, D-O-T, and then he's, he really read it out. You know why? He's so used to reading. Look, this is, <laughs> he was so used to reading those cards, the teleprompter, that he actually literally, literally would do it. <laughs> That's how dependent he is on that teleprompter. Remember, he's so literal with his teleprompter that he has to have every single thing detailed, right? Remember those cards that he had? Take your seat. Make sure you say hi. Uh, only answer so-and-so right there when the reporters or questions come in and then go back. Like literally. Man. This guy's a joke, man. You want to hear it worse? NBC News, title of the article. Biden asks whether deceased congresswoman is at White House event. Now, I don't know if you heard about it, but Biden, he was like addressing certain people. Then he named a certain person or the congresswoman. And he said, is she here? I think her name was Jackie. He referred to her as, is Jackie, Jackie here? But he should know better. She passed away the following year, if I recall. So look at his <laughs> relationship, the people that he knew. I mean, he should know these people. He just fresh fresh off that these people knew about the sad event too and then he just calls the person out after the person passed away read the verse again and i will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable this is so bad that the title of the article from the intercept Concerning the Pennsylvania debate, title of the article, The Biggest, Dumbest Race for the Senate. It's so messed up. It's so messed up. Now we're getting Dr. Oz versus a guy that should recover, that should be ministered to. Not a person with a stroke that affected his mental condition. That's a sad debate. You don't want to do that. It's, it's really sad. You're... Everything's crashing down here. Title of the article from Forbes, How Late Night Talk Ratings Cratered During Trevor Noah's Daily Show Era. Just like CNN, right? 
Everything is going downhill. This is the kind of world we live in, remember. Let's keep reading. Uh, we're at verse 6, 7, 8. We'll skip that part. But notice in verse 7 it says, in that day, right? When it says in that day, that's referring to the same context about the day of the Lord. When we look at chapter 2, verse 12. But also, if you look at chapter 3, verse 18, in that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon. And if you keep reading down right here, in ver chapter 4, verse 1 of Isaiah, and in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. In that day, in that day, right? But look at this. This is the millennium when you read Verse 2, in that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. There's no doubt that's talking about the restoration of Israel in the future. Verse uh, 3, and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. That's no doubt the future millennium. But God calls it that day, that day, that day. So going back to chapter 3 and verse 7 in that day, that's all tribulation context. So tribulation is included within this historical context of the last days of the nation of Israel. Look at verse 9. Doesn't this match very well? with the end times. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as what? Sodom. Sodom. See, they have no shame about that. They what? Hide it, not. hide it not. They don't hide it in Fox News. The title of the article, they want to show it when they wear those garments. Absolutely no shame whatsoever. It's evil. It's wicked. If you keep reading down, woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded what? Evil. Evil unto themselves. That's why all of this is happening. Do you see that? Because of this. But they just call it by a different word. But this is actually considered to be evil to God. God sees evil going on. If you keep reading down, uh, Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people, children are their, what? Oppressors. Yes, we got immature people who are oppressing us right now. And then when they get caught red-handed for being hypocrites themselves, when they force down certain restrictions and forcible rules against us. You can't do this, you can't do that. Then other people start taking out their phones and catch them doing the same acts the past two years, violating their own rules. Then what do they do? Oh, and then they whine. The person that said, summer of love, hypocrite, finally changed her mind and said, this has to stop. Why? Because they finally raided her home. You know why? Immature people are the ones oppressing people. Until they themselves reap, reap the fruit of their doing, then they cave in. And then they back out. Keep reading. And women rule over them. Well, ain't that the truth too? We want Hillary Clinton to come back. We want this person. We want that person. You see... Uh, Saki and the other person who are supposed to be doing such a great job, but then she even bailed out. You know why? They can't take the pressure anymore with press brief. They can't take the pressure about that anymore. They all run away. You know why? That's the fruit of people promoting this. Do you see that? If you get triggered by some things that I say, look at the fruit of all this that you're doing. It's crushing the country. It's crushing the country. The Bible says, verse 14, the Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your 
houses. All right. Let's look at the next one. Go to uh, chapter 10. Chapter 10. We looked at Israel. Now let's look at chapter 10. You know who's in there? For some of you who don't know, it's the Antichrist. That chapter talks about the Antichrist. He is known as the Assyrian. He's known as the Assyrian. Look at Isaiah chapter 10. The Bible points out there are some enlightening things here. Verse 1. There's a lot to read here. A lot of interesting nuggets that you're going to see matching up. Verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they had prescribed. What? Didn't we have that the past two years? They uh, right, put unrighteous decrees and put grievous things as your prescription? All right. Verse 2. To turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. Hasn't homelessness and crime and poverty increased a lot during the past two years? Why? Because they're not doing their job, even though they're hip hypocritically saying, oh, we have to do justice to these people and help them out. No, you ain't. Verse 3. Notice that we can see tribulation wordings here. And what will he do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far? God's saying, he's warning, it's coming. Why aren't we seeing that right now? It's like as if God's warning us, if you've had verse 2 going on about needy suffering, the unrighteous decrees and the grievousness that they prescribe to you, God's warning the day of visitation is coming towards your way. Verse 3, to whom will he flee for help? That's why those billionaires are making bunkers. That's why those rich elites, those government officials, those TV personalities are bailing out getting, uh, or leaving. And where will he leave your glory? Without me, they shall bow down under the what? Prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. What happened the past two years with the prison? You know, uh, I have close people who uh, work in uh, legal areas, and especially in the Bay Area, and then they would mention that you know, the reason why this crime keeps on going is once they get jailed, they get out real quick. Why? Because of what's going on right now. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. I will send him against an hypocritical nation. God sends the Antichrist because that nation justly deserves it. It's a hypocritical nation. Now, I know that this can refer to the Assyrian or perhaps Sennacherib to the nation of Israel. But even if we were to apply that historically, we see him matching it up today. But there is a tribulation application as you keep reading. There are some parts. Verse 6, And against the people of my wrath will I give them a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the what? Mire of the streets. That's what the Antichrist wants. You know why elites are doing that right now? Treading down the people like mire in the streets and then... Uh, taking the goods for themselves, the spoils, and treating people like prey? Because you have to have the biggest elite coming out, the Antichrist. People have to get used to these elites so that this big elite can get away with it. Do you see all this going on right now, these precursors? That's turning into the Antichrist when he does this actu in actuality one day? Verse 7, interesting. Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh, who, who are you to say that these leaders would do something awful to hurt their own people? In China, that's just ridiculous that they, uh, it would, the leaders would deliberately let something lose. 
and they injure their own people, that's just a sign of weakness in their own nation. That does, just doesn't make sense. America doing that to its own people? That don't make sense. Why would they do that? Verse 7, Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. Oh, he don't mean it that way. Look, his heart's in the right place. What they say in the articles, Fauci is a good man. He dedicated his service. And so he will do a lot of things to come. And, but the verse keeps reading, pointing out that it's a negative factor, not a positive factor. No, I do not trust elites. I don't. Amen. Some of these names that I've given out, I cannot say with wholehearted cer certainty that it is in their hearts that I want to destroy every person out there. But I do know this, you have to have, you have to have some elites doing that so that the Antichrist can do that. Yeah. Why? You have to have a, because how can the Antichrist have elites joining his side if elites aren't used to the habit of doing that themselves? Right. Crooked people will have crooked people, a crooked person to be their leader yep. and to team up with so that they can rule over the prey, the poor populace. That's just common sense, all right? Communists are not going to uh, volunteer a guy who's really a heart for the people or a good guy. We, you need communists voting in someone just as bad as them who don't care about the people. And they'll all say that it's equality too. So I don't see much different with our country. I think we're seeing communists. Not much different. Even, even if these people are truly believing that what they're doing is for the good of people, you know what I don't believe in? I don't believe that their actions are good either way because it violates clearly scripture what they're doing. So what they're doing is promoting evil even with good intention. It doesn't. It doesn't change the fact. There are plenty of people who have good intentions but have done hurt to people. That's just reality in life. So that doesn't justify what our leaders do. Let's keep reading. The Bible points out at verse uh, 12, Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, By the strength of my hand I have done it, isn't that what the elites are doing right now? My hand, I did it. So the big elite, the Antichrist, will do it one day too. And by my wisdom. Isn't that what the elites are doing right now? My wisdom, I'm so wise. Yeah, that you bailed out. That you retired. You got fired. That you quit because you can't take the heat. While Christians who aren't educated like you took in the heat and marched on. Bunch of pansies and sissies. Yeah, I'm kicking their tail. Yeah, I'm stinking angry at them. Cowards, for I am prudent. Look at what he says. And I have removed the what? Bounds, Bounds of the people. We got to tear down walls, remove the bounds. We all have to integrate. We all have to be together. That's the Antichrist task. Notice what his task is. In order to turn against and kill off people at verse 7, he has to get them together. That's why this is going on. Do you understand that? The reason why they're pushing this, this agenda, is because so that killing the people off can be done. That's why it's doing this. This red thing is what people are paying attention to. All they're seeing is this. But behind the scenes, they're not seeing these. That's what's going on. Notice right here at verse 13, it continues, by removing the bounds, see, that red foundation that I drew out, right? So by laying this out, it blinds them from seeing at the same time what he's doing. Have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. How about that? So his job, or the elite's job, is to push this, and at the same time, do this. Why? Because they're not going to pay attention to this when they keep looking at this. That's success. 
brilliant. That's so brilliant, man. It's the most brilliant thing that the devil ever did. Because after World War II, when nations have united more than ever before, people have been harping on that, emphasizing that, so much so that we've now passed a century, we're so used to that. So we priority, prioritize this as number one so that when all these things going out, they become secondary. We don't pay attention. So people are, you know, complaining about January 6th, January 6th. That just ruined our unity where racism and white privilege was going out more than ever before. Blah, 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 blah. You know what's hilarious? This is from CNN Politics, title of their article. Voters may care more about the cost of French fries than January 6th panels compelling evidence. How funny. You know why? Because these stinking news media have been pushing this on people's eyes. Hey, pay attention to this. Paying attention to this. January 6th tried to ruin this. It ruined everything. It's all white privilege. People were getting sick and tired of watching that. So then they... They didn't care about that. All they cared about was my French fry. <laughs> you know, what, what's that a sign of? Our society is that bad in shape. It's in a mess. Can you believe that? How funny. People care more about French fries than CNN. Isn't that funny? That's how bad CNN is, man. <laughs> they care more about French fries now. This thing is so horrible that here's the title of the article from Summer Camp Society. White is the default at camp. Let's work to change that. So they're changing everything in the workplace, in the sports, in hockey, because there's too many white people apparently. What about basketball and, you know, let, let's not go there, shall we, okay? Why don't we do the same thing about that one and other parts? So you notice how this trend is going? that it's going down to bicycling, believe it or not, that they're accusing, it's the white, so many white people are doing it, that you can't even camp anymore, pretty much, you white people, you. They're blaming you that you're taking all the camping thing. It's a white thing. <laughs> this is so loony. You know what the Bible says? Isaiah 2, children rule over them. The base rule over the honorable. Oh. You think it would get any worse? <laughs> I don't know how much more worse it can get. They're just going downhill even more and more and more and more. Another one, uh, this is from, I mentioned about Biden reading exactly cards that would tell him what to do and where to sit and who to call upon. That is true. This is from Business Insider, and they're a little bit of a left-wing source. Biden accidentally flashed a cue card telling him exactly where to go and what to do at a White House event. Title of the article from NPR News, because they know this is not going well and that society is going down, that no one cares about CNN anymore, and that ratings and views are going down. Title from NP NPR News, Republicans have long feuded with the mainstream media. Now many are shutting them out. Everyone is losing trust in not just government, but in news. There are high statistics on that now. You know why? Because there's so much bias. So much bias going on. No one cares anymore. This is from Fox News. For some of you who didn't know. Title of the article, Republicans demand answers from Biden officials on report China open police arm in New York City. Wait, I thought we we're supposed to be concerned about China, but then they allow a police station from China to be in New York City. And they're questioning them on that. See, the nation, I'm telling you, I, I'm sure, telling you, down, 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 down. Here's another one concerning about the Ukraine war. The title of the article is from Reuters. Russia, uh, oh, they, uh, I lost the article right here. It looked like they changed the article title. Okay, 
I guess I won't be. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> they changed the article title. So then I lost it. So I can't read the article title. But anyway, you can look it up yourself. It, shouldn't, it should be easy to find. But uh, Russia and nuclear war and Ukraine might become a real thing. They're really talking about this. They're getting scared. Russian, Russian news are claiming to their people that Ukraine's going to uh, plant a dirty bomb and then they might retaliate. Zelensky actually even admitted from the BBC News title, Zelensky, Russians being prepared for nuclear warfare. This is from, uh, from five uh, NBC News. I think uh, this, the, auth the author is Megan Lowe. This is published October 26, 2022. Title of the article, Post Online Claim the U.S. is Buying a Radiation Sickness Drug. Now, for some of you who don't know what that is, that's because of uh, anything nuclear that can go off. So they're preparing. That's true. That's the title of the article. Russian President Vladimir Putin has repeatedly signaled that he could resort to using nuclear weapons to protect the country's territory gains in Ukraine. President Joe Biden also warned that the world is at risk of a nuclear Armageddon amid the war in Ukraine. We have not faced the prospect of Armageddon since Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis, he said on October 6. That's scary. That's really scary. Google search data also show people are asking whether the U.S. is buying a radiation sickness drug. Oh, <laughs> ooh. But we're all paying attention to, remember this, the interview that Biden did with that individual, because that's a big deal. But there are people who don't care and they're getting scared. They can see that this is, <laughs> that there are bigger things to worry about. And CNN's whining, they're not caring about January 6th. There are bigger things to worry about, fool. Title of the article from Reuters, Ukraine Zelensky asked Israel to join fight against Russia. Oh, oh, now Israel's getting involved? In Isaiah, who's the main nation God's reading, uh, God's paying attention to? Israel. Israel is the centerpiece in everything. Now Israel is getting involved in all this, especially with the Ukraine-Russia war. It might get... Uh, pretty much there. The Antichrist, he needs that treaty set up. He needs to be set up, right? Well, here are some, uh, for the Abrahamic Accords or the Abrahamic, um, not covenant, what do they call it? The deal or the interfaith that they're doing? It's Catholicism, Islam, and Judaism. That is getting closer and closer because they now have their own symphony. It's uh, the title of their YouTube video is The Abrahamic Symphony by Ehab Darwish, John Debney, David Shire. They're about to, and they, uh, they brag, this is the first interfaith thing that we've ever done as a symphony. We're getting there. Israel is getting involved more and more with the uh, Antichrist world agenda. Israel may join, may share nuclear tech with Abraham Accord states, Israeli atomic chief said. And this is from the Jerusalem Post. Oh, so Israel's now getting involved with this nuclear stuff. And then the title of the article from the Jerusalem Post is, The Russia-Iran Drone Axis is Now a Global Threat. Russia is getting involved more with Israel, and Israel's getting called out by Ukraine, and the Abrahamic Accords uniting with the Antichrist world. What is going on? We're almost there. We're almost there. 
And then when you talk about the rapture and we're almost there, their job is to make sure you don't think about that, but to think about this, this, this piece of garbage right here. So then CNN posted an article, then you know they're really getting desperate. Yeah, come on. Title of the article from CNN, for some Christians, rapture anxiety can take a lifetime to heal. Why would they post an article like this? Unless the devil knows his time is short. Unless, uh, unless <laughs> he anxious, amen, bless God, he anxious. Unless we're getting there, unless they know that they can't last forever. When the mark of the beast comes out, those things are coming to pass too and ushering even sooner. Title of the article from CNN Business, weird. Amazon Alexa will be able to mimic deceased loved ones' voices. Now you get the dead involved. It's kind of like death and hell involved at Revelation chapter 6 with the Antichrist coming out. Another one is, uh, this is a YouTube video title, Microchip Implants for Payment Becoming Reality. Some guy, I think in England, now became the first where microchip inside and then he buys it now. Wow, they're pushing this. Why? Because people are paying too much attention to this piece of garbage. So now all these things are just going Oh well, oh well, oh well, oh well. Well, we've all got to be concerned about this, obviously, right? Here's another one. <laughs> this, is, this is messed up. This is from uh, Dr. John Campbell's YouTube channel. He's got a lot of good stuff when, cons when dealing with this issue. And they can't actually really shun him down on this one, actually. Because he goes by actually research papers, documented sources, and in a medical practical standpoint. But the title of the article is Pfizer Blanked Out Pages. And he complains here. It's so... Oh, man, it, they should be complaining, but there's no news about it. But uh, when they brought it up to the government, there were actually, when they were taking out the pages from Pfizer to examine and investigate, there were over 100 blanked out pages. I'm going to read word for word what he wrote in his video description here. And uh, a lot of times... Uh, uh, I'm going to be giving certain code words, so just pay attention, okay? <laughs> this safety, content alleging that this cause chronic side effects outside of rare side effects that are recognized by health authorities, efficacy of this, content claiming that this do not reduce transmission or contraction of disease. Ingredients in this, content misrepresenting the substances contained in this. My colleagues have perfectly summarized the masquerade or farce of yesterday's meeting. None of the questions we asked, which were very clear. Contracts, prices were not answered. Pfizer should be required to give evidence under oath because this is an official hearing. This was the biggest contract ever awarded by the European Commission. Uh, I'm assuming E is Euro, 36 billion. <clears throat> European court paper, 35 pages of questions, criticisms, criticisms, demands, lack of transparency, none answer. Suspicions of passive corruption to be put into action. I have contacted a legal firm in France. Summary, they came, they did not answer anything, and they are still selling us their products. And then came out a tweet everywhere about a person who actually asked the Pfizer official about were there actual tests run that would prevent transmission 
Then the Pfizer official said uh, there was none, and then it was all over, and then people got upset about it. So then, to be fair, I'm going to use Reuters fact check, okay? Yeah, I'm going to go by th those guys who side with Pfizer, okay? Title of the article is Fact Check, Preventing Transmission Never Required for huh, Initial Approval. Pfizer huh, did re reduce transmission of early variants. Read that whole article. You know what they did? So then I get it in scientific terms and medical terms. So basically what they're pointing out is this did, uh, was intended when they launched it out with clinical trials to deal with the actual uh, disease itself, okay? Not for transmitting it to person to person. So then if that is really the case, and if I'm interpreting that correctly, because I'm trying to be as fair as I can to them, then they go off on a rant that the transmission part, because the government was full aware of that one, they didn't, uh, they didn't really care about the transmission part because it was considered to be uh, because they were more paying attention to the actual disease part that the individual had, right? So then that's why they launched it out, and then they argued, so then transmission later on, on, it did lower down. And then when I read all of that, my laughter inside is just this. My laughter inside is simply, it don't matter, fool, okay? Because no matter what you scientifically argued right here, people are still catching it. And they even admitted it. And they actually argued it did die down for the first stages of this disease. But then they don't say the same about the variants. They'll say it does have an effect on the variants, significant effects, but now they've been backtracking. So they're saying the earlier variants, it did work. See, so it did work. You know why they're saying that? Because they know the transmission still spread because of their excuse later variants. So you know what my complaint is? I don't care if let's even say all of this is scientifically accurate. You're, you're not stopping this no matter how many times you did it. That's my bottom line. Yeah. Yep. You're never erasing that. All right. <sighs> oh my goodness. These people. So, winter is coming. Are people paying attention to that? Biden, uh, in Politico, he mentioned this a long time ago, title of the article, Biden warns of dark winter in America. And I don't know if people have been looking all around them, but NPR News, title of the article, flu is expected to flare up in U.S. this winter, raising fears of a now they have another word. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. No. You know why? Because now we're counting flu this time. Yeah. Now we're counting flu. Miraculously, it was like 98%, you know, not available. Yeah. You know why? Because they can't shut, shut up about this anymore. And it's not stopping something. And they know they can't erase flu forever, all right? You tried doing that for 10 years, dang, okay? Yeah. So that's why they're saying, so now we'll have to argue it was two, you know? Well, fool, we've been saying that a long time ago. <laughs> you know why? Because they've been counting flu with this. That's what they've been doing. But because we got this one, now we can distinguish the two. <laughs> Idiots at their finest, man. Yep. Ah. This is from Yahoo. Yeah, Yahoo. Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. Title of the article. Dr. Fauci predicts new beep variant could lead to winter surge. I think something can happen. There are some people worried about what's going to happen. I hope I'm dead wrong. But I think something bad can happen pretty soon up ahead. But the title of the uh, article from The Guardian, they claim this, and they claim this is from the BBC. BBC prepares secret scripts for possible use in winter blackouts. We've yet to see. But then they talk about a uh, Europe, 
they're all talk, warning about a winter uh, energy low and danger going on too up ahead. They were able, uh, they claim that this year might be better than last year. So that's the slight good news that they give. So I don't know how much of a good news that is, but uh, one thing I've learned is whatever they report on, it always changes. I don't, we've lost our trust in the government and the news. Everything changes. Jesus is coming. I didn't talk about the anti-Semitism part, but Lord willing, I'll probably do that next time because I got to wrap things up. But we see that the, con the, see the fool, the fool that they blinded you in is this, is this piece of garbage right here. So then by focusing all on this, all of this is just going past by, <laughs> because we're more worried about hurting somebody's feelings and then we could care less when everything falls to hell. Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teachings have all been another eye-opening thing about our world around us and that we will not fall prey to this machinery, to this garbage, to this feeling, this influence of this wicked world, but have our minds set straight on the Word of God and keep doing our part. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.